Hello everyone and welcome to the world of tomorrow. Well, Space Engineers. Close enough, right? If you've been watching my Space Engineer season on YouTube, you will know that the last few episodes I have been pretty focused on the mining script that RDAV developed. RDAV's AI auto mining script. Actually, the first episode I built a mining ship which was very cube and very ugly and uh, that night I had a well while falling asleep I realized that I could make it better by putting this cargo container in between and making it all a bit slimmer and I had also uh, not set up the stone ejectors properly I'd only got one sorter which meant that the stone was not getting ejected quickly enough so the next day I made this one it's definitely a little less ugly it's not the prettiest ship I admit uh, but with a paint job which I will do at some point and a few tweaks here and there making it a little bit less squarish maybe adding a few carbs down there it will look better but I digress the whole point of doing this video is to show you how you can set up that really cool mining script I've just disconnected this one from the grid so I can show you the stone ejectors. You probably don't want your miner to make multiple trips back to base just carrying a lot of stone. I've got eight stone injectors on here, four on this side and four on this side. And this one only has two drills and one medium cargo container just hidden behind there. And you'll see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sorters. And they are all set up to throw out stone. The ejectors, there are just as many. You will see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is probably more ejectors and sorters than you need, but I erred on the side of caution and put on more than I probably needed. This, these ejectors throw out small chunks of stone, which doesn't interfere with the guidance of the ship. You will also notice if I can put a few blocks here to demonstrate that this these ejectors are actually in line with this drill so the stone getting ejected out will be one small block away from the ship which is great because this drill drills one space around it all the way around so the hole that this one drills will be large enough to fit the stone the way the script works is that the ship will go to the asteroid and then it will mine right through to the other end and reverse all the way back. You need to bear that in mind when you consider where you're going to put these ejectors. If you put the stone ejectors in the back, then when you reverse back out or when the ship reverses back out, you're going to run into the stone. I did that. I made that mistake on this ship. The stone ejectors are in the back. And the ship does run into a little bit of stone when it reverses, but as you can see, it's done a few mining trips, but it's not actually taken any damage. So even if you put the ejectors on the back, you're unlikely to take damage. It's just, it's just unpleasant or it's just not ideal. The other thing that you need to consider is that the purpose of this ship is mainly mining. So you want it to be going out there and spending as much of its time mining as possible. You don't want it to spend time parked on your base charging batteries. So you ideally, you want to think about putting in reactors. Let me just show you that I have a number of reactors. I've set up four just to be on the safe side. I've obviously got Tim set up on the base as well. That's Taladan's inventory management system and that's for another episode uh, to feed it full of uranium. You might want to use Izzy's refueler script which is also very good but it doesn't work well with Tim when I tried it. That's why I've just got Tim working on here. You could put solar panels on here, but then you have a size and shape problem. The ship goes to the asteroid and mines right through. What that means is that you want to keep the ship confined entirely within the range that the drills will mine out. So you have the drill plus one small block to the all the way around it so to the left up and as you can see this whole ship fits within the confine of that one extra block up at the top there on the left we are not even using and that space is used by the stone ejectors 
to throw the stone out so we don't run into it and one underneath which you can just barely see if I try and place this here and you can see that the thrusters are sticking out a little bit but it doesn't go further beyond that one block and that is very important otherwise your bits of the ship are just going to hit the walls of the cave that this thing digs and then break apart and explode. Now this ship is going to need a few things for the script to work. It obviously needs a programmable block which I put just in this little hole here so that I can see it and I will probably reposition it somewhere else because I like seeing that little computer but that's a, a aesthetic thing only and this script I will show you how to pick up the script to pop in there I just call it PB for programmable block, but it always reminds me of peanut butter or Mr. Peanut Butter from Bojack Horseman, but that's a different thing altogether. And if we look here, this one is clearly running and it wants the GPS coordinates of where it wants to start mining. I will get to that in a minute. Now that is the most obvious thing that you need. The next thing that you need is a remote control. And you can see there's a remote control just sitting right here. The next thing that you absolutely need is the sensor and actually that's it of course you need the drills and the remote control and the sensor you don't have to configure the sensor you just have to have it on the ship and if you go into it you can see that the sensor is just set out extends all the way out this is what the script uses i presume to detect where the asteroid is and mine right through it i have for convenience, put a camera right in the front here so that if ever I'm curious as to what the ship is up to, instead of going all the way out to the asteroid, I can just connect to it and see what the camera is showing. The other thing that you probably want but don't absolutely need is an antenna. And you will see I do have an antenna in here and the range of it is set to five kilometers but I would change this depending upon which asteroid it is mining. And I also have an antenna on the base so that I can communicate with this ship when it is out there mining. Let me show you how to get the script into this programmable block. Now, when you get started, there's going to be nothing in this program. Well, there'll be something. There, there will be only the default code in this programmable block. Getting the script is a little bit of work. Not a huge amount, but just a little bit, because the script is there as part of a blueprint. So that means to set up the script, you're going to need a projector. Hopefully in the future, we will just be able to install a script. It's a large block projector that you're going to need, and you can set it up anywhere that you can build off of. For convenience, I might do it off this wall here so it doesn't interfere with anything else. And you don't need to make a lot of things, but you do need to make some things. And obviously I'm in creative mode, you would need to weld that up, go into the projector, and go into blueprints, and you can see, of course you need to subscribe to that mod first, and as long as you subscribe to it in the workshop, it will show up here, and just give OK. And that will show up over here. A, an upside down or sideways platform in this case the only thing that you actually need is that programmable block so pick up some steel plates and pick up a little bit of interior plate because you need that for these pillars and pick up the parts that you need to make a programmable block weld that up I'm just doing it in creative so that it is easy and quick to demonstrate Go into the programmable block, Control A to select the whole thing, Control C to copy it, then fly on over to your ship and put that into your programmable block. Control A to select everything and Control V to paste it in. Then you check code, remember and exit. And if you look on here on the bottom right hand side of the terminal, you will see the information that the script has output. By default, the script prevents execution if you have more than 15 thrusters. This check is in there to make sure that the script does not cause performance issues on servers and so on and so forth. 
However, because I have more than 15 thrusters, I can go in here and check, and clearly you can see more than 15 thrusters. There is a way to fix this. There is an easy way to fix this. Go into edit, and it is not line 25 as it says here. It is line 52, if I remember, which is right there. And it says bool thrust count override true. And it tells you in this comment here, toggleable override on thrust count. All you have to do is change that true to false. How easy is that? Check code, remember and exit. And now it's telling you that you need to dock to a static connector to use as a drop off point. Now, my understanding is that you can dock it to a ship, but the ship needs to remain static while the while the mining happens. So the next thing that this the script wants you to do is dock it. There we go. That should be it docked. If I go into that terminal and PB for the auto miner, you will see no asteroid input. Please paste valid GPS in custom data. So let's head over to an asteroid. Now here's an asteroid that I'm pretty sure I've not been to before. What I will do is our base is over there with the eight signals. I'll just point it on this side so that it has an easier time getting here. Now you want the GPS marker to be roughly 30 to 50 meters away from the wall of the asteroid. It needs to be probably around 30 meters away, otherwise the vanilla autopilot AI gets confused and uh, it, it just doesn't work well if it is too close to the asteroid. The limit of the sensors is 50 meters. So if the asteroid is more than 50 meters away from the ship, then it won't be able to, de to detect the asteroid to know which direction to go to to be able to mine into it. So I'm just gonna just eyeball it. I have no idea how far this actually is from the surface. If you really want to, you could put a GPS marker on the asteroid itself and then go back 30 to 40 meters and then put another marker there that you would mind. But I'll just eyeball it and take a chance. New from current position and I'll just call this auto mine location. Okay. With the GPS marker placed, all we need to do now is put that GPS marker in our programmable block. We'll do that by going into our GPS here, selecting our location, copy to clipboard, and we can just pop it directly in here, access that, custom data, and we just paste it right in between these two app signs. So control V to paste that in, give OK, and you'll see the ship's already taken off. It's on its way over there. Now, there is one thing that you really need to consider when you're setting this up. The mining location needs to be within a line of sight of the ship when it is docked. The reason for that is the script relies on the vanilla AI for autopiloting the ship to its destination. And that AI is, to put it politely, terrible at finding its way around obstacles and so on and so forth. So if I was to have a mining location uh, GPS marker behind this asteroid over there, and if I tried to get the ship to go and do that, it would probably get lost trying to find its way around this asteroid here. For it to have the maximum likelihood of working, try and make sure that it has line of sight. Now ideally, you would point it in the direction of the asteroid as well, but in our case, right here, if I did it that way, it would, it might try and go through these ships here, which would be not that great. But clearly it works, even if you face it a slightly different direction, because that ship flew over to here and then made its way over to that asteroid. And you can see that it's wasted no time drilling its way through this asteroid here. And it's also kicking out a bunch of stone, just collecting all on the edges there. One thing that you do want to remember to do is you want to set up the antenna to have enough of a range. Now we are 6.66 kilometers from the base. I hope that's not a sign. The, we want the antenna to have at least that much of a range. So erring on the side of caution, I'll give it 8,000 meters or eight kilometers. The benefit of this is 
I don't have to come over here to really check on this ship. Now I can't see exactly what it's doing, but with the camera mounted, I can do this from the base. So I'll just go into the Ant Mark II, which is the name of that ship. Ant Mark I is the original ship that you saw at the base, a square, ugly ship. And we can just go into the inventory here and see what's picked up. And we can see that it's already picked up. Oh, actually, I think it's almost, or is it full? It's almost full. The second drill is almost filled up as well. And then it will probably make its way back to the base. So I can do that. And if I want to see what it's seeing, remember the camera I mounted on it? I can just give you, it's clearly still mining. I'm just drilling straight through maybe iron. So that makes it very easy to see sort of what the ship is up to. Just some ideas to make life easier for yourself. Now you'll see it's still making its way through and when it when it realizes or when it finds that its inventory is full it'll stop mining and make its way back. You'll see it's drilled its way all the way out of that asteroid. If I was to guess, I would say it goes out about 50 meters, just to check that there is no other no other section of that asteroid out here, then it will reverse its way back. It will repeat this process until its inventory is full, and then it will make its way back to base. If you wanted to send it back to base early, I can show you how to do that as well. But in this case, maybe we will wait and wait for it to fill up and go back automatically. So it's decided that it's full, and it is making its way back. We can check the programmable block to find out its current status, and it will tell us here, docking to offload. There's a ship coming back to park. Now, if you're testing this in creative, bear in mind that the ship will not ever automatically return. The reason for that is in creative, you have infinite inventory capacity. The script checks to see when the inventory is full to determine when it needs to come back. So make sure you're in survival mode, which we are right now, so that the ship comes back and parks to offload the inventory automatically. Once it's parked, docked, and transferred all the cargo, which shouldn't take too long, it will do the same thing again. And this time around, we'll wait for it to get part way through and we'll get it to come back to base early and I'll show you how to do that as well. There it comes and it's just going to finesse its way to something very close to the hole it's already drilled out and make its way through. Now if we want it to come back to base, for example if you are about to exit the game and you want it to come back, and there's a reason for that which I will explain later, you will go into here go into the programmable block and just in the argument section, just type in FIN. Uh, I don't think it needs to be all caps, but I always type it in all caps and just click run. When you do that, it will say has finished tunnel true and you will see it reversing back out. So it didn't go through and finish the tunnel. It's just reversing back out already and it will make its way back to base. The really cool thing to remember about this is that if you've got your antenna set up, you can do this from the base. You don't have to be right next to it as we were right now. We were right next to it just now so I could show you that it was traversing out and heading back. One thing that you need to be aware of is that when you load the game again, the miner does not reliably continue from where it was left off. It gets confused. It often asks you to start by setting it up with the connector and then set up the GPS coordinates and it'll make its way again. It'll carry on once you've set it up. So what I always do is 10 minutes before I'm done playing or 10 minutes before the end of my episode as it usually is, or five minutes or a few minutes before my episode ends, I will access it remotely. See if we check now, it is several kilometers away. So I just access it remotely like so. And mark two, PB, it's already on its way back, but I would just type in fin and run 
and I would just wait for it to come back to base before I saved and exited the game. If you save and exit the game with the ship somewhere out in the middle of an asteroid and it's asking you to find a connector, as long as you have an antenna attached to it, it's not all bad news. I have a home waypoint set up just here and I just go into it. So for example, I will show you with the app mark one, even though it is in the base just now, I will just go into the remote control unit for that. And I will ask it to go to a waypoint, home waypoint, add, and I would remove these two other waypoints, which are set up by the script and ask it to just go there. So it would make its way back to base unassisted. So all you would have to do is wait for it to come back to base park it on a connector, set up its additional GPS coordinates, and off it will go again to continue with the mining. I haven't really run into any other issues with this script. I have absolutely loved this, the way it works. It is so autonomous, and it does a wonderful job of mining large amounts of ore without any supervision. Now, I've clearly got two miners here, the Ant Mark 1 and the Ant Mark 2, and I plan on just letting these two run and pick up ore for the time being, but I certainly intend to have a few more of these set up. Maybe a large grid one, which should work exactly the same as the small grid ones, and you know, with a little bit of a paint job here, this Ant Mark 2 might even end up looking a little bit like an ant. You know, two antennas there, and you know, bunch of legs which can be the thrusters and so on and so forth but I can tell you this is an amazing script and you all should definitely give it a shot I am hopeful that this video has explained it enough that it will be very easy for you to set it up if you have any questions do feel free to just ask them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them I hope that you have enjoyed this video and found it to be informative I want to be making a lot more of these videos and would really appreciate your feedback Thanks a lot for watching and see you again soon.